thought the pro calibration procedure. Now I've already had this amplifier in operation, but we're gonna throw it back in the calibration uh, calibration mode. To so I t took off the SMA connector here, and I, I pulled this through. You can see it there, and I just folded it back, keep it out of the way. While uh, while the soldering iron's heating up, I'm gonna change the bias to off. So we're gonna we're gonna move the pins towards the towards the uh, PA. So that's uh, that's that's all set there. Uh, so um, as soon as the iron heats up enough, we'll we'll take the we'll take the feed line off the off the pallet and make it into the jumper. Okay, then the next thing, the power off, power off, we're going to hook up the SMA connector right to this, I have the dummy load hooked up uh, through a watt meter, 10 10 one and make sure we're in CW mode. So if I go to FSK mode and send, you can see it's about 88 watts. That's what this transceiver is about capable of. It's CS2000. So, so that means that my test, my test uh, jumper is okay. And then uh, we'll go on to the next step. And here we'll go through the boot up scheme again here. And then you can see I got the manual open. I'm ready to rock. So then what we'll do is we'll hook up the, uh, we'll do a screen record. There it is, you'll see it fire up. You see the voltage climbing. As soon as it hits 50 volt, volts, it's ready to go. Alright, so I'm going to let that hang actually. Let's uh, turn R1 15 we'll turns counterclockwise. Um, step two, turn R17, 15 turns counterclockwise. So by the documentation, um, we'll do uh, one at a time. So let me get my good screwdriver here. So we're going to go, um, there we go, using a non-conductive screwdriver. So turn R1, 15 turns counterclockwise. So R1 is the power input limit. It's this little bottom potentiometer right here. It's the very first one in the string, so we'll go nuts and turn that all the way down. Okay, this is 15 turns. So we want to, so we want to temporarily dis disable input detection. So R1 is going to go all the way down. So we're going to do that 15 turns, it's just about there, there it is. You can almost hear a, a click once you've reached the far left limit. And then we're going to disable input protection, which is R17, which is the one right above the one off centered here. So this one right here is R17, and we're going to do the same thing. And there it is. So. We do not want to adjust R18. Uh, it says it specifically in the documentation here, which is this uh, this this pot right above R17. Okay. So we're going to calibrate the voltage display. So with an accurate meter, I'm going to go ahead and start the recording here. Okay. Okay. So that's take that takes care of step uh, one and two. Step three is uh, simply making sure we adjust R2 or R22 to be in the same uh, ballpark uh, with voltage. So I'm yeah, going to, to, to set calibrate this here. the voltage display. We're going to adjust R22. R22 is right around, is, it's going to actually be the top one. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Hopefully it stays on. So 
so R22 so let me go ahead and I have the leads attached we're going to put it to positive and negative so that's saying we have 53.4 volts so R22 again is the top one and we want 53.4 It's kind of touchy but it's not too bad right on the cusp so it goes either 53.3 or 53.5 so I'll try to get it to flip between those two yeah never shows four imagine there we go 53.4 all right so next in line Temper remove bias on the pallet. Now I have already removed by uh, bias on the pallet so let me check the voltage I'm gonna put the bias back on Let's see if the voltage changed at all. Without transmitting anything, it doesn't really uh, turn the driveway down. Let's see if the voltage changed just by putting the bias on or off, even though we're not keying it. Fifty three point three. So it's about the same. So we'll leave that there. All right. Temporary move by bias. So moving moving the jumpers back to uh, bias off. And then got it. So off is okay. So test coax wiring. So what that means is connect the tree transceiver keying line and make sure that the. Uh, the, the frequency changes. You calibrate it. So now we got to we got to calibrate the frequency detector. So what I have to do is um, oh, just went to sleep. That's cool. So we got to check, connect the transceiver, so connect the dummy to load, test all the. All right, so let's test the bandpass filter. So it's in universal mode, so it should, should detect the frequency that I'm on. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I can check all but six meters. So let's go, that's uh, 12 meters. Boom, it goes right there. 21, yep, 15, detects just fine. It's 17 meters. It's 20. Same filter set. Here's 30. Alright, here's 40. Same filter set. Here's 80. And here's 160. So we can't test hundreds, uh, I can't test uh, or easily test uh, 6 meters because TS2000 that I'm using to excite this is kind of off a little bit. but. Tested it in the last uh, in the last go around when I first went through the You are forward and reverse. Pretty sure. So that's going to be R19 and 20. R19 and 20 are right at the top. There's the top three group right here. This is 19, and this is 20. So it says go ahead and cr turn the uh, R19 and 20 10 turns clockwise. So I already did most of that, but you can hear the clicking that we've reached the outer limit and we've gone beyond it. There we go. So now what it wants you to do is go on the uh, on the debug screen of the menu page, and um, under debug, we want to look at A4 power output forward. So what we want to do is uh, adjust R19 counterclockwise until it deflects a little bit. So here we go. So here's 19. So A4 power out forward. Let's see. 
key transmitter with a just enough drive to produce exactly 30 watts of output. So let me see if it specifies a band. If not, I'm just going to go up to 40 meters. I'm going to hit send. So that's about that's about 5 watts. So I'm watching my meter. That's eh, about 28 watts. Um, and it's set to 30 watts on the thing. So A4 power out. It should is reading about 550, so I'm going to back this one off just until I see it change below 550. So it said it could go a full turn before it grabs. So I'm going to go like 548. I'll be pretty good, and there it is. So there's the output for it. So it's about 546, 548, and the same thing with R20. Want to make sure it's right at the top or right at the end. So A5 power output on R20, so here we go, same thing. Still keying up the transfer, about 27 watts, A5 power out reflected. Oh, we gotta do it, we gotta reverse the transmit and receive. So let me take it off a of transmit. Okay, so we have to swap around the uh okay, the uh coax coax. is reversed. So this is step uh this is still under step eight. So now I got a, I got a, the reflected power. I got to jack down R20 a little bit, just until it reaches, uh, just until it changes the the number within five to ten digits. So right now it says about 540, 548 again, and it's all the way, making sure. Yep. So I'm gonna back it down. So I'm gonna let this one to say like 541. It's not changing yet. Once it does start changing, it goes pretty quick. There it is. So I'm going to go right back to around 540, and that should be good. So I'm going to see what the next step is. Maybe we have to reverse the, uh, tran the feed line uh, back to its proper place. Reverse. Uh, since the last step of step 8 was reversing the coax connectors, I'm going to go ahead and, and do the reverse power calibration first. Um, I think it's pretty close anyway, but we're going to try it. So we're going to, we'll, we'll actually do it both. So what it wants to do is uh, nine. Well, we want to uh, calibrate the SWR bridge. So we have uh, we have the unit connected up. It says uh, put on ten or six meters. I have it on ten. Key the transceiver with exactly thirty watts of power while while keying the transmitter. Adjust the coupling cap for minimum reading on the A5 power output put on the uh, uh, reflected on the uh, on the screen. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit it. We got low SWR anywhere. We got about uh, 30 watts. I'll bump it up a little bit. There's about 30 watts right there. And then um, power out reflected. I want to adjust the coupling cap right here. So right now it's around 90. So it goes up to 100 quick. Up to 100 quick. So there's a dip right around where it was. So I see about 92 is the number we can set. And that's where it's going to be right there. Perfect. So that's going to be about, let me bump it a little bit more. There it is. Okay. Now, key. So now I'm going to go back to the regular TFT screen, and I'm going to go ahead and key it with 30 watts of power, and it says it's about 29 watts, so I'm going to go down a little bit, so that says it's 26, and we're saying it's 25, so it's a little bit low, and I need a small, you need a little bit smaller of a screwdriver, like a precision or eyeglasses type screwdriver for these screws these potentiometer adjustments so here we go so that says about 26 watts so that's where I'm gonna set it 26 watts there all right I'm gonna unkey the transmitter and I'm gonna go ahead and flip the uh, the, tra okay. the transceiver I'm gonna go ahead and went ahead and reverse the uh, the, the transceiver uh, the, the feed lines on the back so I'm gonna transmit right into the output I'm going to go ahead and hit send. 
and it's saying that reflected power is about 24 watts and it's in fact the same about 26 watts so in the same little metal housing is going to be the that uh, so I'm going to adjust that up a little bit so it says 26 watts and right about there now 25 we'll go up a little bit more Here we go. Between 25 and 27 watts would be good.